Hello and welcome to Millie White Cooks. Today's recipe is for my crisp, golden and utterly delicious chocolate cream puff shoe buns, which is from my gluten-free and wheat-free easy bread, cakes, baking and meals recipes cookbook. You can also use this gluten-free sweet pate choux to make eclairs or profiteroles too. We'll start by taking a quick look at the ingredients list. You'll need your choice of plain or all-purpose gluten-free flour blend. I'm using Dove's Farm, which is a UK brand, but you can use any general gluten-free flour blend. And this is 60 grams or one third of a cup plus one tablespoon. I'm also going to use two tablespoons of corn flour or cornstarch, which is one of my tricks to make the pastry become really crisp and light. We'll need a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, but you need to make sure that your flour blend doesn't already include this. My two lovely free range eggs are sized large in the UK, which is equivalent to extra large in the USA. Then we need 50 grams or three tablespoons of unsalted butter. And as these are for sweet shoe buns, I'm adding just half a teaspoon of natural caster sugar. I'm going to fill the puffs with cream and for this I need 120 ml or half a cup but we'll come back to this later as I'll also show you how to make a chocolate ganache to spoon over the buns too if you like. You can make the shoe pastry by hand just using a spatula or wooden spoon and some elbow grease but I prefer to use a handheld mixer fitted with beaters too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more gluten free recipes. Now let's get cooking. Measure out 150ml of cold water into a saucepan. 150ml is equivalent to half a cup plus two tablespoons. Place over a medium heat and add the butter and heat until the butter has melted then bring it up to a brisk simmer but don't overboil. Now I've already mixed together the gluten free flour, corn flour, xanthan gum and sugar so it's ready to go as soon as my water boils. Move the pan off the heat and add all the flour mixture. Using a spatula or handheld food mixer, beat together vigorously to form a smooth paste. At this point, I prefer to use a spatula. Do not panic if it looks like it's all gone wrong. Just keep beating it and it will become smooth. Can you see? Now I'm gonna to switch to the food mixer. I've cracked one of the eggs into a ramekin and lightly whisked it with a fork. I add the first egg half at a time and whisk in really well between each addition. So that's the second half of the first egg. Now that the paste is a bit looser, I can add all of the second egg in one go. Then whisk really well again and do not panic if it looks a little curdled. Just keep beating until it's smooth. See how it's now perfectly smooth. I like to finally scrape down the sides with a spatula and make sure that it's all well mixed. Normally I would do this all on the kitchen worktop rather than the stove. I've just done it here for the camera. Line a large baking sheet with baking parchment and can you see that I've spritzed it lightly with cold water so that the parchment has tiny drops of water on its surface. You don't want it drenched or puddles of water, just a very light spritz. I do this by holding my clean hands under the cold water tap and then just shaking them over the baking sheet. If you want to make eclairs, spoon the pastry into a piping bag fitted with a large nozzle and pipe out the pastry into 12 cm or 5 inch strips, leaving plenty of space around each eclair. But we're making shoe buns, so you need to transfer a heaped dessert spoon of pastry per bun onto the baking sheet. If you wanted profiteroles, just use a heaped teaspoon instead. Finally, use a wet finger to flatten out any peaks and to shape the buns. You need to preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius fan or 425 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 7. Place the baking sheet in the oven and bake for 20 to 25 minutes for eclairs or buns or 15 to 20 minutes for profiteroles until the buns are well risen, crisp and golden in colour. Look at how beautifully these have risen and puffed up. Once out of the oven and taking care not to burn your hands, 
make a small slit in the side of each bun to check whether they are cooked all the way through. Return any that are still slightly soft inside back into the oven for a further three to five minutes to dry out. Transfer all the buns onto a wire rack and allow them to cool completely. It's best to fill the buns no more than an hour before serving. However, the cooled, cooked buns can be stored in an airtight container for a day or two before use. On the day of serving, simply recrisp them by baking for five minutes in the oven and then cooling before filling. To fill my cream puffs, I'm going to make a maple syrup and vanilla chantilly cream. Start by whipping 120 ml or half a cup of heavy cream or whipping cream in a bowl. When the whipped cream reaches the soft peak stage, add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and half a tablespoon of maple syrup and whisk lightly to combine. Now fit a piping bag with a star nozzle and fill it with the chantilly cream, then pipe this into the buns where you slit them previously. Finally, for a really decadent touch, I'm going to serve mine covered in a chocolate ganache and chopped nuts, but this is purely optional. So to make the chocolate ganache, you will need 100ml of whipping cream, which is a third of a cup plus four teaspoons, plus 100 grams or three and a half ounces of 70% cocoa fair trade chocolate, which I've broken into small squares, and about 20 walnut or pecan halves that I've roughly chopped. Place the cream into a saucepan over a medium heat and bring it up to the scalding point. You can see that the cream is hot and steamy with small bubbles at the edge of the pan, but it isn't boiling. Remove from the heat and tip the chocolate pieces into the hot cream and beat with a spatula. Do not worry if it starts off looking grainy, just keep beating and it will come together into a lovely glossy sauce. So let's plate this up. We've got our decadent hot chocolate sauce, our filled cream puff buns and our chopped nuts. I'm going to serve mine on this lovely glass dessert stand. So take a filled bun and place it on the dish, then spoon over some of the chocolate sauce and sprinkle with the nuts. Repeat until all 10 buns are decorated. Here's my final one. Don't they look absolutely stunning and they taste as good as they look. You could also serve the buns individually in small glass bowls for an elegant dessert course at dinner. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have. These chock and nut shoe buns are just one of over 50 recipes from my gluten-free and wheat-free Easy Bread, Cakes, Baking and Meals Recipes cookbook, available as a paperback or Kindle book from Amazon or as an e-book from iBooks, Nook or Kobo. You'll find all the links in the description box below and I also have a quick video preview that you can watch too. You may also be interested in my gluten-free chocolate celebration cake recipe video, so why not watch that next? Thank you for your company. Please do leave a comment below and bye for now.